In this video, I'm going to edit a high contrast image to do tone control and bring out the shadows. I'm going to do it in Lightroom first and then using the new Luminar Neo. Let's see which one is faster and easier. Hi, I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and I help beginning and intermediate photographers like you to improve your photography right from capture in camera all the way through to the editing process. So without further ado, let's get started. Right, so the challenge is that it's, you know, midday lighting and it's really, really contrasty. So if you can go back to and shoot at a different time of day, that's optimal. But let's see what we can do with what we've got. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is the camera profile. I always like to just see okay, what I can do. So I could, I could start here and go with flat, which might help. Okay. Portrait actually brings out the red. Vivid, we definitely want, don't want to go with that because it's it's contrastier. We want to neutralize, if anything. So let's try neutral because you see immediately it's giving us, just by hovering over, it's giving me more detail in those shadows, right? Flat, too flat. So when I talk about flat, what I mean is lack of contrast, okay? So if you're not familiar with that term. So I'm going to go with neutral. And then I'm going to do my shift double click. And you'll notice that it actually took whites to the minus side. And I usually don't like to do minus on the whites. So I'm just going to check the highlights. And I don't see anything clipping. So I'm not sure why it's taking the whites down. But let's just, let's just do that. Okay. So right off the bat, we've got a little bit of detail coming out. We can bring the shadows up. Okay. But then you see it starts to get flat again, okay? So you have to be really careful if you're, I'm gonna show you what you wanna not do, okay? On an image like this, okay? You want to not overdo the pumping up this highlights down and the shadows up and creating sort of this HDR-ish look, okay? Because if we do that, we lose all the contrast, okay? And then I see people do this. Okay. So yes, we've got tone and detail in the shadows, but now it's sort of the shadows are almost the same tone as the highlights, which is weird to the eye because you know that there should be contrast, right? So I'm just going to undo a bunch of these steps. So undo, I could just do reset and that would take me all the way back to the beginning. But I'm going to go back to this point here where I had applied just a slight minus highlights. Uh, actually even there. Nope. Oh, there. Okay. So we're going to go back to there. Then we're going to get a little bit of shadows. So use these two sparingly and don't go push to the far ends. Okay. Let's do some local adjustments to pick up the detail. So when I'm talking about um, all of these sliders here, these are what's called global edits. Okay. Maybe let's change the white balance as well. So global edits apply to the entire image and local edits are just a part of the image or localized, okay? Okay, so that's as far as I'm gonna go with the local adjustments. <clears throat> the other thing I can do actually is go down to the HSL panel, which is hue, saturation, and luminance. So luminance is brightness. And there's a targeted tool here as well, okay? So like the eyedropper that I used on the white balance, I can click this little targeted tool and I wanna target this grass because I wanna darken it. So when I click and hold and then drag up and down, it's affecting the luminance of any tone that's similar to where my cursor is, is sitting, okay? So I'm gonna darken the grass a little bit like that. I'm gonna darken the sky. See what an amazing job that did. And I'm gonna see what happens if I go in here. Yeah, so it's, it's affecting the tree. I can do red and orange to bring out those leaves. So let's see what that's doing. Okay, so without masking or anything, I'm just affecting those bright areas. Now that I've darkened those, I'm gonna go back here and just bring the exposure up a little bit. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. And it's kind of this dance that I like to do with do a couple of sliders, do another adjustment, and then revisit your other sliders if you need to. See how I just added some black back in because it was starting to look flat, right? Next, I'm gonna do a mask. So 
let's see what happens if I choose select subject and see what it picks. Okay, so it only picked, I'm gonna change this to green. You can change the mask overlay color to a different one. I use the bright green and red a lot. Uh, because the tree is red, I couldn't see where the mask was. But you see what happened is, for some reason, it only picks there. So what it's looking for in the AI that's working in the background is which part of the image is in sharp focus, okay? So apparently it thinks this part of the tree is the subject, okay? So I'm actually going to undo that. And let's just try a radial gradient. So I want to affect this whole sort of, no, yes, this whole sort of middle section, okay? So I'm just going to draw a radial gradient, which is an oval or a circle here, okay? And I want to brighten it, okay? But I'm going to show you a couple of different ways. So if I brighten with exposure, see how it starts to get flat again? And I might want to just expand that a little bit. Try to get that part of the tree up here. Okay, so it starts to look flat, okay? So you wanna kinda of do a balance adjustment. So I like to do whites, okay? So see what happens when I bring the whites up? It starts to bring the highlights out in the other parts of the tree. Exposure is actually mid-tones, so I'm gonna use that one. And look at the difference that's doing, okay? Let me turn that off. Don't want to show my overlay. All right. Okay, so before, this is the very beginning. Look how dark it is. And now we've brightened it up, but it still looks fairly realistic. And then I'm just going to check the blacks again. Okay, so see, there's always this dance. As I brightened everything, and now I want to make sure that I still have blacks in these deep shadows, okay? One thing else I notice is that it's very blue down in this area compared to the sun area here, okay? Now I could add another mask to darken the grass even more. Uh, this time we could add a linear gradient, okay? So that's like a edge one like this. And I'm just going to bring the exposure down and even the blacks a little bit, just darken, okay? So I just wanna darken this edge in the sun, okay? And then the color difference I want to adjust. So shadows are always bluer than um, areas in the, sh in the sun, okay? So what I'm going to do is go into this color grading panel. And you think that color grading is for doing things like black and white split toning, but you can actually change the color of the shadows here. I'm just going to give them a little bit of sort of yellow orange, okay? And it's just adding this little tinge of... of color in the shadows, it's very subtle. Here, let me just do a little bit more so you can see. So see it's affecting overall, the more that I go to the outer areas, okay? Let's go a bit more yellow as opposed to green. There we go, okay, so that's too far. Again, everything in moderation. So you can see what it's doing. See how the gravestones look really, really sort of blue. And then when I turn it on, that's helping. So I'm just gonna dial it back a tiny bit. So you're just matching the color a little bit more of the overall image, okay? So technically that's a global edit as well. Uh, let's see, what else can we do? Cropping, I might crop this one a little bit because there's, I wanna always look at the edges of the image, okay? So there's these um, pillars here that look like it's from the other side of the walkway and a little, tree bit sticking out over here. So I could clone that out, but I wanna get rid of this too. So I'm gonna keep the aspect ratio. So when I when I move this around, if I don't hold anything um, and this is unlocked, okay? So if I lock it, it keeps the aspect ratio, meaning it doesn't change the proportions, okay? If it's unlocked, you can do any proportion you want, right? Or you can hold shift key and hold it down and it will keep the proportion. So I'm just gonna come up from the bottom little bit to get rid of some of those things in the bottom and that tree over there. And I might actually clone these guys out, okay? So this type of thing, um, I could try cloning this in Lightroom. I'm using a lot of the keyboard shortcuts here. 
Um, Rob, if you could please share a link for people to download the Lightroom um, keyboard shortcuts PDF. We have a free cheat sheet for you that is a um, Lightroom keyboard shortcuts that's a one pager that you can print out and have handy. So I'm going to try cloning here. And sometimes Lightroom does a good job and sometimes it doesn't. Okay, now that's not bad, but it kind of looks a little bit funky color wise. Let me try it again. I'm going to make a smaller paint. Okay, now it thinks that it wants to pull from there, which is a little bit weird. So I'm going to find a different area. That's not bad. That's not bad. Now this one, I think I'm going to have trouble with. Okay. And now that I've edited the shadows, I'm going to go back and actually make the overall image less green and even like that. Okay. I could also go and select the sky and see if we can even darken it a little bit more. It should give us a good sky selection. Okay. So notice how it didn't really pick up the clouds. Uh, which is interesting. So let's just see if I dial down the exposure, see how it's not affecting the clouds, right? And it's kind of got a bit of a halo. So there's no way to actually fix this mask or dial it in, up and down. Like I can't say shift it or anything like that, but let's just darken it a little bit. All right. So there's our before and after. So everything I've done, and I've talked about this before, um, is in this image in particular is about tone control. If we go back to the one of the snow, it was very similar, but in that one, I actually wanted to add contrast. And in this one, I've decreased contrast. Okay. So ironically, <laughs> I've chosen two images that were exactly opposite to work on. So I hopefully that gives you some good tips there. I want to pull this one into Luminar. So this is the original. I haven't done any edits on it. It's just a copy of the raw file. And I'm going to actually pull this one into Neo because Neo has this new slider, Relight AI. Okay? I do find it's a little bit hit and miss, and there's a couple of things about it that I would like um, changed or altered, but it works pretty good in conjunction with the Accent AI tool. So let me just resize my window. All right, so the Relight is under the Creative Tools. So if you've got Luminar AI, you will not see this one, okay? This is a t feature that is just in Luminar Neo. Okay, so you can adjust the brightness of things near to you, okay? And again, it's looking for, you see how it's brightened the foreground? It's looking for stuff in the foreground. But you can adjust how far it goes into the scene. Okay, so if I increase the depth, it's going further in and brightening up the tree. But the problem is <clears throat> it's brightening the foreground as well. Okay, I could also darken the background. So see how it brings that sky down at the same time. Okay, I can warm up the near bits. Okay, so that's warming up under the tree. So a whole bunch of things that I did with multiple steps in Lightroom are all happening in this one tool, right? So I brightened up the tree, I warmed up the, the uh, gravestones, and I darkened the sky. This is all happening within Relight, right? To fix the problem of the foreground, currently the only masks that they have in Neo is the paint mask. Ideally, I would use a graduated one here, but I'm gonna show you how to use the paint mask in erase mode. I'm gonna turn this down to about 80% strength. And I'm going to erase down the bottom here, okay? Because I don't want this affecting the foreground, okay? So see how it's now coming off of this area. Make sure I get all the bits. So see what that's doing? It's not affecting the foreground now. So I'm just brightening the areas in the middle, okay? Now, the cool thing about this is um, this is also new in Neo in terms of how it works in, in history, okay? I'm going to go in here. So edits, it used to be called history, now it's edits, okay? So you can see that Relight has been applied, and I can go back here and change any of the sliders if I want. Or, guess what? I can apply it again. So do the same thing. Mask it again. Oops. <laughs> I painted it in, got to hit erase. 
Okay. Oops, I've switched it. Let me see if I can invert. Yes, I can. There we go. Okay, so I've gone too far now, but the idea is that if I, I didn't brighten enough, I can just go farther. Okay, so I can apply it again. Now my masking was not great, so I'm just going to paint a little bit more over here because I missed this one. Paint a little bit here. Okay, so the idea is, again, that if one pass of this tool wasn't enough, just add it again. Turn that off. Okay, so now we got before and after. And when I close it, you can see that there's now two relights applied. Okay. So that's something that actually goes back to Luminar 4, where they had tools as opposed to Luminar AI, where you can only do one of everything. Okay. They were more like filters in Luminar uh, 4, and you could apply multiple versions of the same one. Okay. For example, you could apply a, a LUT or a mood and then apply a second one. Now you can do that again. So that's one change with Luminar Neo that is a really positive change, right? Then I'm going to go up to the Enhance AI, which is a great one. Okay? And you'll notice that that takes it even farther, okay? So when I do that, it brings up the contrast in that tree and makes it look more believable. And then the Sky Enhancer darkens that sky for us, okay? I'm going to do a vignette. Now, one tool that is missing from Luminar Neo currently, and I do believe they're going to be adding it back in, is dodge and burn. Okay, so if I want to dodge and burn at selectively lighten or darken areas of my image, there is no dodge and burn tool currently, but there's a workaround. So if you go to develop and lower the exposure, for example, give me a second. Needs a minute to catch up, apparently. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna lower the exposure. And what I'm looking at is just this bottom part, okay? So I'm adjusting this just for the bottom part of the image because I'm going to paint it in. So this time I wanna make sure that I have paint, make sure you have the right brush. And I'm just going to darken this bottom area like so, okay? Now the cool part is I can adjust this, right? So I can make it darker or lighter any any time. So even once I apply it, okay, now you see there's develop in here. I can come back any time and say, oh, I went too far and lighten it up a little bit or just bring the shadows up a little bit or the highlights down even more, okay? So it's totally editable. What else did we do in the other image? I cropped it, okay? So the crop tool, it used to say um, composition AI, and now it says crop AI. But if you press that purple button, it's going to give you a suggested cropping. And I find that it gives you a pretty good um, sizing crop. In this case, I'm not agreeing with it because it's cutting off the tree. So I'm gonna expand it. And let's do something similar to what we had on the other one, because I want to try erasing. Okay, so about like that. And I'm trying to keep this edge here as sort of a border in the image. So let's do a similar crop, and then let's try erase. So let's see how the erase tool works in here compared to Lightroom's cloning. Okay, so we've got these guys down the bottom. Oh, that's interesting because I can't see. Oh, there it is. Let me just zoom out. I'm too zoomed in. There we go. Okay, so we want to erase this guy at the bottom. Okay, so I'm just going to highlight it and press erase. I tend to do one at a time. Um, let it do its thing and think because trying to do multiple spots, if it gets it wrong, um, it's harder to undo. Okay, You have to do more undoing. Uh, that's actually another thing that is missing in Neo is undo. So that's something that um, myself and many of the partners have indicated that we need to have an undo. So another thing that I'm hoping they put back. Okay? So you can see it did a really good job of erasing that. 
another really good job. Okay, so I'm very happy with that. Now, if there was any uh, power lines in here, which there isn't, we could also do the automatic erasure of that. Okay? And I'm just going to put a final vignette on here. Okay, so my vignette trick, turn feather down all the way, turn a mount down all the way, and then you can see your vignette. And in Luminar, this was available in Luminar AI as well, you can actually move it around, okay? So you can't do this with the vignette tool in Lightroom. You'd have to do a radial filter, okay? So then put it back to something that is a little more subtle, okay? Now, I do notice that I picked up a little bit of blue here in this area. There's a couple of ways that I can fix that. We could use toning, okay? So toning is similar to um, color grading that I used in, in Lightroom. Okay, so I want to affect the shadows, okay? And I'm gonna change the hue so it's a bit more yellow. I generally turn it way up so that I can see the color because otherwise you're just sort of guessing at the color. So I want it, and again, I'm looking here and then turn it down. Okay, I can also mask this, okay? So if I only want it to apply in this area, okay, I can do that. Okay, so I really want to affect this and I'm going to paint it in just in this area, okay? because the rest actually looks pretty good. Okay, so you see what that's doing? It's just picking up that blue in that area. I see a little bit of blue here. Okay. Like so. So let's do a before and after. Okay, it looks good. Let's apply it and go back to Lightroom and compare. Oops. Forgot, I didn't finish painting. Let me get the whole thing. So you, I need to have an area to pull from that's as big as where I'm trying to. Um, and so this is what's called the source area. It's going from there to the other spot. Okay, so this is your source. This is your target. Okay, so if I just look at that, it's not bad. It's not great though. Okay, so I'll just keep moving it around. And it's doing what's it's, it's doing what is called content aware fill. Okay? It's trying to match this area with what's around it. Okay. Now, if I don't look too closely, it actually looks not too bad. If I want to do a better, um, more detailed edit and make sure that it's perfect, I would take it into Photoshop. Okay. So let's take a look at this image again before and after. Okay. So you notice that we got to this very similar result with Luminar Neo in many ways faster. I didn't do much masking or painting here, whereas I did more masking in Lightroom. And I think the cloning here actually was a better job than the Lightroom one. So let's take a look. Okay, so there's the Luminar one. There's the Lightroom one. Let's look at them side by side. Okay, they look pretty similar. The Neo one looks like it's a little bit bluer, so I could have warmed it up a little bit more, but otherwise um, pretty similar. I see actually more detail in these shadow areas here than I do in Lightroom, right? Um, I think the cloning was better here than it was in Lightroom. The sky looks a little better. So other than the, the color temperature, there's not a lot of difference there, right? Let me take this over to develop. Okay, because after you're done, oops, I'm just hitting lights out here, by the way, to do that. So that's L. After you're done and it comes back to Lightroom, the image that you've done in Luminar, you can still edit it. So let me just warm it up a little bit and see if, see if they look closer now. Okay, now they look closer in color, okay? So I got very much similar results. And again, both of them are just tools. Um, use the use the tool that is the easiest for you to work with. And that's partly why um, I love Luminar products because they're much more intuitive and easy to use, right? You see how the relight sliders and the relight filter got us a lot closer right away. Okay, so having watched that, did you learn something about the difference between editing in Lightroom versus Luminar Neo and which workflow is more intriguing to you? Which one appeals to you? Let me know in the comment area below.
For more learning on Luminar Neo, check out this video now. Or if you really want to dig in and get started with Luminar Neo now, you can pre-order my Luminar Neo course available here. Thanks for watching.